Mr. Michael Hurley. Come on. Oh, they they want me they want me to dance because they're videoing I will only dance when the camera goes off <laughs> I want to remain married <laughs> my wife's like oh Jesus the second coming's here <laughs> oh this is just it's so good. I honestly have had a very difficult time this, this week sleeping, but not because of torment, because of excitement. I wake up several times in the night going, is it, is it time? Is it time? It reminds me when I was a kid and going to Disneyland. Is it time? And I just really wish that I had chosen the layout of the speakers different. Because following Shuri, Shirley is like, <laughs> you got to understand, like, she's been my counselor for years. And so when she talks hard, it's like, whoo, I got to need to stop talking about right now. And so it takes me to a place where I recognize how much God loves our hearts. How much he's after our hearts. And so... It's just good. It's just good. It's good to be here. So um, I'm going to make a good distraction for myself right now. And uh, I would like for all of us to get really wild and crazy in this place. And I would love to thank nothing more than our volunteers, our leaders, our pastors, our staff, our hospitality, our children's ministry. And everyone who gave into this opportunity to love on, can we give a shout of praise and thank God for one another. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. And I love my wife. I do. And so tonight I'll treat her well and I will dance for her. <laughs> I also like to thank our communicators. The, the lineup has just been phenomenal. It's been, it's been amazing. I've just been really encouraged. Uh, yeah, from Pastor Frank, Doug, man, I just, I, w he actually shared that at one of our, at our gatherings, and I just said, that's it, taking ground, that's it. We, we need such encouragement in this season. That's how you take ground. It just kept building from there. It just kept building from there, and, and I think the best days of the church are ahead. Yes. Who's the church? Yes. You better start, start, start talking to me. Who's the church? We are. Yeah, the best days are ahead for you. Amen. I just think you should say the best days are ahead for me. Some of you are saying by faith, that's okay. Amen. We're going to receive it by faith. I think the best days are ahead. For you as individuals, as leaders, and I believe MFI's best days are ahead. Speaking of MFI, didn't John John do a wonderful job? Of giving us a presentation even about MFI in the beginning part. And, and he said, you know, this is not a timeshare, but he sure shared a lot of time about MFI. <laughs> and why wouldn't he? Neither of us are paid by MFI. We, we serve at the pleasure of knowing that God wants to build relationships with pastors and to build the kingdom of God. We're kingdom people. Amen. So why would we not give our lives to something that Jesus so willingly gave his life to? Amen. And we, we love MFR, we love um, this movement of pastors because we believe that as we see pastors coming together to network, and the networking is really about relationship. I've been in MFI for over 20 years, 
And I know that it was instrumental in our ability to be healthy at a heart level because relationship is what God wants for all of us. Amen? You don't have to be a pastor. You need to have relationship with people. MFI does that really, really well. If you have a team here, you are here, and you've been thinking about MFI. It's just a no pressure place about MFI. But if you have a desire, you're like, man, I just increasingly feel like this is my tribe, then uh, the tribe is always open to more people. The spirit of adoption is at MFI, right? And so we would love to talk to you more about what that looks like. And so I'm going to get in my message. One of the things that I was lamenting is I wish that Pastor Frank's message was last because I really could have then told you he stole all my notes and you would have noticed that he had taken all my notes. I actually had the audacity to watch his video before everybody else did. And I was like, oh, dear Jesus, maybe I'm mentored by him. Maybe that has something to do with it. But it did give me a little privilege of taking a little bit of attack and moving just slightly different. But I, I, I pray that, that after Shirley's message today, that, that I'm speaking to you from the heart and that your heart is open to hear. You know how sometimes it's like we're, we're listening with this, but sometimes we need to let that drop down and start to minister to our heart. And so I pray that your heart is encouraged by the things that not only Shirley was saying, but the things that God's placed on my heart for us this, this morning still. Amen. God wants us to take ground. There's actually a mandate for you to take ground. It's not just, I kind of think taking ground is a great idea. No, no, no. There's actually a heavenly call for every believer to take ground in every sphere that God has for your life. Because everyone has different spheres of influence. God wants you to be an influencer in every sphere. And he's given you a taking ground mandate. When we heard the words of what taking ground is defined, I'm just going to recite that. It's it's a military expression meaning to obtain possession, a forward move, and a stretch of ground by force. Which is kind of funny. Well, it's not funny, but you think about what's happening in the world today. And I'm not speaking necessarily from the refrain or the idea of physically taking ground, although I believe that God has ground for people to take physically for churches as well. Amen? But really speaking more from a spiritual application about taking ground, that we have a spiritual mandate to move the church forward. I want you to say forward with me. And to do what? To take ground. What is this mandate specifically in taking ground? It's to build the kingdom of God. It's to establish heaven on earth. Amen? And how many of you noticed that, that, you know, in life church has not been exempt, that there's been a lot of things that would love to interfere with God's mandate? That we've been faced with several challenges, and I'm not going to hang out on the challenges because I want to land with this understanding that God has made overcomers a part of the story and the fabric and the tapestry of the church that you are part of it. But that there is a consistent, ongoing mandate to take ground. And whether you are succeeding or, dare I say, even struggling forward... We must have the attitude that the Apostle Paul had, which I love that Shirley talked about, the Apostle Paul. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I'm going to get in the word right away. Philippians 3, 12. He says this, not that I have already, what? Or that I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Paul, Paul's writing, he says, I am not perfect. How many know that as pastors probably and leaders should have that attitude? We're, we're not perfect. We are a work in progress. Amen. I am not finished. Sometimes I need to remind that to, to my wife and my children and to my, <laughs> my loved ones and to, to uh, believers in the church. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not finished. God's still working in me. Amen. 
I think that some, I mean, this is not my notes, but I think sometimes congregations need to hear their pastors say, I'm sorry, I'm not a work uh, that is finished. God is still working in me. Amen. How many of you think we win more battles with church people? Amen. If we just said, I'm a work in progress, but I press on to lay hold of whose idea? It's God's idea. This whole thing, this kingdom that we're talking about building, the mandate to build it is God's idea. I think sometimes we need to be reminded that it is God's idea. We're called to simply water that idea, and we know that who is the one that gives the increase. Although Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but where did the increase come from? I press on, I lay hold of, and this seed idea of God's is the kingdom. And I'm under a heavenly mandate to build the kingdom of God. That mandate is to take ground. I I was writing this and I was like, I'm encouraged. (laughs) How you you have written a message, you're writing it, and you're just like, I'm so excited because I'm the guy that God is after to take ground. And so I pray that you're receiving the way I am too. Amen. I want you to say, I have a mandate. mandate. To do what? Oh, you guys are ahead of me. You guys know what's going on. I have what? Turn to your neighbor and say, you got a, you got a mandate. Got a mandate. <laughs> Amen. You got to say it quickly. You need, to, you need to say that quickly. You have a mandate. Have a mandate. <laughs> Don't turn to your neighbor and say, you got a mandate. <laughs> you do the southern thing, it may be a little weird. Especially the dudes next to you. All right. A mandate is the authority to carry out a course of action. We have a mandate to build the kingdom and to take ground. And Jesus has given us ownership and authority for the kingdom of God. In this mandate, he has equipped us with the keys to the mandate he's given us to build. And so I, I, I want you to hear my heart this morning. I want you to hear I have a mandate and for you to begin to begin to repeat that. And then you start saying, I'm going to take ground. And then you start going, how am I going to do that? I'm going to do it with the keys and the authority and the ownership because I've been grafted into the family. And the family that I'm a part of is not lazy. The family that I'm in is activated for the kingdom to move forward. Amen. He's given us this authority. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, come on, finish this with me, will be loosed in heaven. Somebody got to get that in your faith and rise up. And your authority is activated when you respond to the mandate. Let me say that again. Your authority is activated When you begin to respond to the mandate to build the kingdom of God. I think sometimes people feel like, uh, uh, just, can I just talk even closer to the heart and just go to the heart like Shirley is talking about? I think sometimes we feel like we hear pastors and leaders say, I I just can't do it. It's too difficult. The soil's this. The soil's that. This is this. And And after a while, I'm like, you have authority. And if he's given you the mandate and he's given you the authority, you need to start calling heaven down to loose some things and to bind some things and recognize that the authority that is in you is not your own, but it is Christ. Matthew 6.33 is very clear that this mandate needs to be first. It needs to be first. Matthew 6.33. But seek what? I want you to get in like literally a heated agreement with me this morning. But seek first. That word from the Greek protos, meaning before all others in time and order, importance and priority, earliest, first. If we're going to take ground, we have to have a protos kind of encounter with God where the kingdom mandate is first in our life. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. I just feel prophetically that some people have wanted to add on to you, but God wants to add unto you as you sought him first. 
From the beginning of creation, God has given us an ongoing mandate. Remember, this is his seed idea that he's continuing throughout history into our contemporary time. Genesis is very clear from the beginning that this is God's idea about taking ground. Genesis, we see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, taking ground to be fruitful and to multiply. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and and subdue it, have dominion. Amen. He wants us to take ground and to be fruitful and to multiply. Some of these things you're going to start agreeing in your spirit. Yes, this is what God is saying in the mandate to build the kingdom of God. And you're going to start getting on the right track. This is the one that God has given you the power. Come on, to overcome every doubt and every challenge. Taking ground is the promised land. Taking ground, rather, in the promised land. Taking ground in the promised land. Crossing over and possessing Possessing the land, Deuteronomy eleven thirty one, as we see in the history of, of his story. Uh, verse 31, for you will cross over the Jordan and go into and possess the land which the Lord your God, who's given it to you? God is giving to you and you will possess it and dwell in it. Taking ground and rebuilding. I love the story of Nehemiah. We pick up in chapter 2 verse 4. Then the king said to me, what do you request? I think God needs to begin to stir in our hearts that our asking needs to be not only big with him, but the authorities that are in our city and the sphere of uh, influence and the regions that God has called us to. The king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. I think we need to be prayed up before we ask. Amen. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask you to send me to Judah. And you guys know the story. To the city of my father's tombs, that I may what? Rebuild it. This is a season of taking ground in the rebuilding of what God's kingdom mandate is for our lives. How many of you are like, I need to get a rebuilder inside of me. I need to rise up in the mandate that God has given me. Amen. Taking ground by making disciples. Let's start moving into the New Testament. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came to them and spoke to them saying, all what authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. You know how many times when we were in the middle of COVID, I started getting my eyes on other things. And it's wonderful to return to people getting saved. Amen. And making disciples. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, my favorite part, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is with you in the mandate he has given you. He's not just given you authority and abandoned you, church. He has given you authority and the keys, but he's going to walk with you in this journey so that we can have heart relationship that's sustainable in the growth that God is bringing you. Jesus, I think you need to hear this. Jesus is with you. Church, Jesus is with you. You have a mandate. I need to say that quickly when I say it. You have a mandate. Be fruitful and multiply. You have a mandate to cross over and take possession. You have a mandate to reestablish and to rebuild. You have a mandate to expand the kingdom of God. You have a mandate to grow disciples and first to make them. You have a mandate to take ground, church. Amen. And for some of you, that will be physical land. And for some of you, that will be souls. But for all of us, it should certainly be souls. Amen. And taking new ground requires faith. So church, what do we need? We need greater faith. I know that I've been challenging this season. Lots of doubt surrounding lurking, trying to ensnare my emotions or my feelings or my thoughts, but I'm going to surrender my thoughts to Jesus and I'm going to make certain that I glorify him even up here so that my faith can increase. Amen. Taking ground requires faith at new levels of faith. Hebrews 11, one I love of the Amplified says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Of things we hope for. 
I think there's some title deeds you don't even know you have. you got to go back to God and ask, what is this thing that you have given me? I need to remind myself that there's authority that I've been given for the mandate. There's some titles that, have, that need to be dusted off. I need to remind yourself of what God is calling your faith to. The confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. If you haven't read in the Amplified, you need to get that. Amen. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the sense. We need sentence, senses. We must remember what God has called us to hope for. And to contend for. We need to remember the prophetic word of God over our lives. The reason I'm pastoring this church is because the previous pastor, whom I love dearly, Pastor Mark, and I said, we need to go revisit the words that God had given us through the prophets. And I had no idea that there was a word that was spoken over my wife and I as surely as you were sitting there. My wife and I were pastors in another city sitting on the front row. Many of you have heard this. And the prophet turned to us. We were not on the menu. Come on. Sometimes you want to be at the table so you're not on the menu. I was, but we were, we were sitting right there. And, and suddenly he turns to us and he's like, he starts to prophesy and he starts to speak about my wife and I. And he says, all the promises that have been given to this house, there I say, this place and this locale will be realized for, through you too. <laughs> What's he smoking? I'm pastoring a whole nother city and all. And I was like, I was actually really scared about possibly stares from other leaders and people because I was like, this is an awkward moment. <laughs> Because it was abundantly clear. I mean, I'm giving you the short version, but it was abundantly clear. I think even the pastor was like, what's going on? <laughs> and so sometimes you categorize the prophetic into different ways. And I think that it's really important. You never throw a prophetic word away, but you put it up on the shelf, dust it off occasionally. And some you need to contend for and others you need revelation about what is God trying to do. And so when I went back to that prophetic word God spoke to both Pastor Mark and I, went back to those prophetic words, pulled out. I'll never forget the moment. How do you know that some moments are just sealed in your mind? We were crossing over the twin bridges, and I started reading that prophetic word, and he and I began to weep because we knew what was in the mind and heart of God was actually going to happen. So both of us had to deal with the present reality of both of us being from a place, giving up that place to go where God wanted you to go. Taking ground requires that we dig up the, come on, the prophetic words of what God has given so that we know how to contend in the now for what God is revealing. Amen. We need to remember the prophetic words. And, and some of us not only need to remember the prophetic words, some of you need to get new prophetic words. Amen. I, I sincerely appreciate what Pastor John John said last night. Like, I think that if you're not going to be obedient with the, with the previous words, you're, you, you shouldn't get a new word. Amen. My children, I'm like, until you do what I said, you're not going to get anything new from me. Amen. And so that's a good, good father. I have my children sing that song. Good, good 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 father you're a good, good good father that's who you are and we need to get new vision new hopes amen you, you can't get new faith for old hope they are interconnected so when we get new hope we can get new vision and our eyes can be lifted up let heaven speak over your life amen and for us in this season Lots of different things, avenues and opportunities to go down. But we, we were praying. And how do we know that uh, when you pray, that's a scary place because you're saying, God, what do you want to do? And we realized that a lot of our leaders are in their 20s and 30s, but they're starting to get older. And I'm laughing because they're like, you, you're so old in your 30s. And I'm like, you're in your 30s now. Huh? And they're like, yeah, but you're getting close to your 50s, huh, Pastor? And so I was like, man, we, we really need to, we need to establish 
in the younger generation a pipeline that we've been missing. If I'm being transparent, we, we are a multi-generational church. At the same time, we were really missing intentionality with our post-high school into college age. And so we, we spent hundreds of hours developing a program called School of Ministry so that we could have intern-like uh, ministry that would capture that because we have a vision that says we, we believe that taking ground is not just us taking ground, it's the next generation. If we're, if we're not equipping the next generation to take ground, what is it if we're taking ground but no one's with us? And so we said yes to more work. I think some pastors are afraid of that four-letter word. W-O-R- K. I am. When someone says they have an idea, I'm like, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> For you're not mindful of me. <laughs> when you activate your faith, when you encourage your faith, and by, we, by the way, we, we did, and then we are launching, and we're praying that we'll have you know, as many as five to 10 uh, in the school of ministry. There's, it's just growing. There's a lot of interest and we're super excited about that. When you activate your faith, when you encourage your faith, when you grow your faith, when, when you see the title deed of the things that be- belong to you that you've been hoping for that God has put in your heart, when heaven begins to have a louder voice over the things that you're supposed to go after and to take ground, God begins to give you that new level of faith and new levels of hope to take that ground. But you know what? God is merciful if you feel like, man, it's, I, I need to hang it up because I, I messed it all up. How many know that I, I'm so glad? I mean, I'm slow sometimes. I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. But there's times where uh, God speaks to me through the things I don't do. You guys ready for me to be a little transparent? I'm like... I've been driving by this property over here on, um, on Northeast 16th. You know, the other side of the street is where people are dead. That's a cemetery on the other side. That's why we named our church Life Church. <laughs> if you ever get confused, be hanging out with people alive or somewhere else. Okay. But I was driving up and down this, this street for years, and there was this old, old, old sign uh, that was saying the land was for sale. It was a little bit over an acre that, that uh, uh, is like adjacent to our property in the back. And I never much paid attention to it. Renewed hope and new hope. Renewed faith and new faith. God is merciful and he'll speak to you sometimes for the things you don't do. Right. I was driving by one day and suddenly I saw something new. And it said sale pending. And my heart fell. And I said, God, that's our property. (laughs) What is he doing? They're selling it to the wrong person. It's been there for years. So I called, like any good pastor, a little late. Johnny, you know, just call me Johnny. Johnny, come lately. I was like, hey, there's a piece of property that we need to buy. And it's right next to us. And can you do me a favor? I want you to do this free for us. No commission. And, and I want you to make sure we buy it. And he goes, okay. And he calls me back. He's like, dude, it's sale pending. <laughs> I said, I don't care. It belongs to us. I did. I told him, I said, it belongs to us. And he's a good Catholic. He's like, all right. <laughs> I said, write the offer and send it in. That evening or the day after, you know, you start losing the time, timeline and it starts getting a little bit more embellished and more fun. <laughs> An hour later, no. <laughs> it's the fish. <laughs> and they said they backed out. Oh, wow. And they accepted your offer. And then we had the audacity to say, God, we, we would like to buy for less. And then some issues happen. Don't, don't let your issue be a, a declaration of things are going to go bad for you. Let it be a declaration that this is going to get better for me. I don't care. We found some encroachments, and suddenly they go, yeah, we'll sell it to you for under what we're asking. We got it for almost um, maybe, maybe about 60% of what they were originally asking. My delay and God's mercy... Taking ground. 
I just asked him this week, the, the real estate agent, I said, what is it worth? And he is, it's more than double the value, and it's already paid off. God is merciful. If there's any pastor thinking it's too late to take ground, you forgot who keys you have. We have a mandate to build the kingdom of God. Taking ground requires letting go of some ground to take new ground. This is kind of the central to my, my message. And uh, since I'm the last guy, I don't have to pay attention to that time clock. <laughs> just, leave, just leave when you need to go. Taking ground requires you to let go of some ground to take new ground. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, let go of some ground to take some new ground. As we have a mandate to build the kingdom, we have a mandate to not look back. Throughout all the scriptures, there was many times, do not look back. Anyone feeling salty? Stop looking back. I'll never forget, I preached the message, you know, you know when you're getting older and things change, you're like, dang it, but that was pretty funny. I preached the message, get salty. And, and a lot of the sailors are like, you don't want to preach that message. <laughs> I preached it anyways, and I gave them each a salt shaker, and every one of them laughed through the entire thing. I don't care how old you are, just mess up gladly and know that God's going to be with you. Amen. We have a mandate to not look back. Luke 9.62 But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for what? The kingdom of God. God. It's going to interrupt the mandate he has for you to take ground. We have a mandate with the kingdom. (laughs) We have a mandate with the kingdom and with the plow. And where does the plow go? It goes in the dirt. It's just a really great message. Wow. It goes in the dirt. Think of that. The plow goes in the dirt. The dirt. What did I say earlier? I say you can't make some new ground without giving up some old ground. Some of you are going to have a release prophetically. I just declare this over you today. What grounds are we supposed to give up? What grounds that we've been plowing that we need to let go of? I would say this, old grounds of the past. Old grounds of doubt. You've already tilled it and you are walking in a new level and a new ground of faith. Old grounds of hope deferred. Old grounds of relationships that are currently hindering you. But you've been wary of choosing the pain now. Thinking that maybe miraculously you might have less pain in the future. Let me tell you, you need to let go of some people right now. Because the pain now is way less than the pain in the future. Old grounds of habits. Old grounds of wounds, old grounds of old thinking, old grounds of grounds of you name it, and letting go of some dirt that you've already tilled. This is your time to shake it off. I feel a shake it off message coming now. This is your time to shake it off and give it to Jesus and to move on. I pray that this message is prophetic. Like, I don't prophesy like John, John, but I'm telling you, it's not about comparisons. Sometimes I was just like, God, I just kept saying, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Let this be prophetic in its preaching. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake it off. Turn to your neighbor and say, shake it off. Amen? This is your time to shake it off and give it to Jesus. Jesus himself in Matthew 10, 14 says, and whoever will not receive you, or, nor hear your words when you depart from that house or that city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, right. uh, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Whoo, that is deep. That's tough. That's, whoo, that's like serious. Shake the dust off from that city 
I declare over us today, some of you need to shake off the dust in your city. Some of you need to shake off the dust that in some of the homes that you've been in, you need to shake that off. Some of the people that have been in our churches or even maybe now in your church, you need to start getting in your spirit, not being flippant, not having an attitude that, you know, everybody doesn't get out of my way and car is everywhere. I'm talking about you in the presence of God knowing that some people are hindering the mandate to build the kingdom of God. And you need to bless and release them into their future so that you can build the mandate and the kingdom that God has called you to. Pick your pain wisely, my friends. God wants to do something new and to renew us. Sometimes we've got to shake off the dust. Situations with congregations and people that will not go forward with you. There are times that God wants us to move into a whole nother level of freedom emotionally by letting go of some things. How did the apostles handle in Antioch being kicked out, rejected? I love what Shirley Shannon earlier. How did they deal with that rejection? I was reading this week, so I'll share it with you. Some of you know they were expelled, they were ejected, they were rejected, and they shook it off. Come on. How about Paul and the Viper? Shake it off. I think some of you need to be a little Pentecostal. Just shake it off. Come on. Shake it off. Someone need to hear that. You need to get in your spirit. Amen. Shake it off. I don't be weird about it, but shake it off. Amen. Shake it off. Some of you have been carrying dirt so long in your life, you don't know how to shake it off. This whole entire message, I have been carrying dirt all in my hands, in my pockets, in my shoes. And some of you need to shake it off. 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 And some of you have become comfortable in the discomfort where the enemy's trying to hold you. And God is saying to you prophetically today, you will not move forward in my mandate and tell you what? Shake it off. Some people just won't leave you. Some situations won't leave you. Shake it off. Come on, say it with me. I love our janitors. Shake it off. Shake the dirt of bad experiences. Shake the dirt of rejection. Come on, I feel the Spirit of God in this place. Take it off. Let it go. Dirt of trauma. Dirt of complaints. Dirt of vain imaginations. Dirt of people leaving the church. There's some people left your church. You're still holding on to the dirt of what they left you. Let them go. Bless and release them. Dirt of the religious. The dirt of blaming yourself. Yeah. Still some there. <laughs> Shake it off. You got to let go of ground. You got to let go of ground to gain some new ground. Don't keep retelling. Don't look back. Be the right kind of salty. Isaiah 43, 16. This is what God says. We need to remind ourselves of the one who called us to this mandate. Mandate. This is what God says. The God who builds a road through the right ocean, who right through the ocean, who carves a path through the pounding waves, the God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and they can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about, come on, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. 
shake it off and let God do something brand new. Come on. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? You're like, I'm still looking for it, Pastor. You got title deeds the devil's trying to hide from you, and you need to demand with authority to open back up the things that God has. There it is. <laughs> That's a face statement. There it is. It's like a good song, too. Uh, uh, I'm making a road through the desert rivers in the badlands. Do you see it? That's a question God's asking you. Do you see it? Do you see it? Taking ground requires renewing the mind. We're going to land here. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew our minds. Renew our minds. Renew our minds. I want you to stand with me as I pray this. This now almost noon. Hmm. I want to touch hearts. I want to touch minds. And he wants you to remember that it was his idea for taking ground. I I want you to just bow your heads. Close your eyes. I just want to declare over you. God, I just thank you. Father. I'm asking, Lord, that you, by your Holy Spirit, would touch hearts. Then when pastors and leaders and believers leave Oak Harbor that are not from this locale, they, <laughs> they go, wow, when I go home, I'm leaving all the dirt behind. I'm taking new ground. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for new levels of passion for the mandate to build the kingdom of God. New levels of authority, the understanding of what those keys represent, and loosing and binding. A renewed conviction for the things of God. We would pursue new hopes. We would renew hopes and pursue new hopes. We would renew our faith and pursue new faith. God, that you might reveal to us how to build. above all else where shall we turn everything we want and desire is in you and I pray in the name of Jesus that we would have in our hearts this new level of determination that I'm no longer going to be comfortable with that which the enemy wants me to carry on I'm going to be comfortable in the dirt you're calling me to take. New mindsets in the name of Jesus. A new day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want you to declare this with me. I'm going to shake it off. I think you might need to say that a couple more times. I'm going to shake it off. You're declaring over it. I'm going to shake it off. 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 Keep saying that. Yeah, I'm going to shake it off. I'm going to shake it off. Jesus is building the church. He's building you.